Maybe. <laughs> Where is the thing? It should be on here. Um, well, yeah, it's gone. <laughs> okay, that's my premise. Thank you for inviting me to come over, uh, and thanks everybody for being here early. I'm Monica Munoz Torres, and I'm from Oregon State University. I work at the Translational and Integrative Sciences Lab, and I'm here to talk about the work of the Monarch Initiative. We are, um, this is the title that I gave, but I'm hoping that I can tell you a story of how we're leveraging all of the knowledge that we have uh, about the semantic relationships between biological entities. Uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge that this is not my work, but the work of an incredible team, many of whom are here uh, with a pair, are Mark, the people that are actually walking around Bosque or gave presentations. Melissa Hindle, Chris Mungle, and Peter Robinson lead our, uh, our efforts. Under the, the understanding that one of the core pursuits in biology and biomedicine is to actually find this correlation of phenotypic outcomes and disease with genetic variation and environmental factors, we have based all of the work of the Monarch Initiative. Basically, we are a consortium, a very large group of people that are trying to close, I don't know if this is on, uh, close this gap between the basic and applied research. And so in the middle of the, of the image basically lies that bridge that we're trying to build by connecting the concepts on the left, genomics, molecular modeling, with the concepts on the right, such as um, medical imaging or the structure of electronic health records using uh, semantic-based tools. To do this, we not only look into inwards into the data that we have for humans, but we also look into the data that is available for all species. We try to build connections from phenotype to genotype across all species, and we learn different things from different species. In this figure, I'm simply showing that we can learn a, quite a good amount about the nervous system from uh, the data that we get from frogs, all the data that we get, for instance, from rat. And this is based on analysis of about 4,000 uh, abstracts in PubMed. So the more species and the more information we have, the better coverage we have for a phenotypic data. In this figure, I'm basically showing that we, we have been able to collect about 15,000 or so phenotype associations to human genes, connected either directly by hand curation or in, inferred uh, through orthology. And uh, this is across about five different species, which are the organisms depicted over here. I don't know how bright this is, but I'm talking about zephin and flies and worms. And then on the left, about 3,000 or so genes have been curated with human data. And, and that's only just about 18% of everything that we know about the uh, protein coding genes that have phenotypic uh, associated, that, that are known in the, in, from the human genome and HGNC. If we bring together these five species, we're actually bringing the phenotypic coverage up to about 65%. This is a busy graph, but basically it is trying to explain that the Monarch Initiative brings uh, diverse data, including genes and mechanism and context, phenotypes and diseases. We bring all of this data from a variety of different sources, including the uh, model organism databases as well as non-model organisms and bring all of this through uh, a, a, a disparate array of ontologies and trying to integrate it uh, with an uh, integration layer by basically connecting non-specific or non-species specific ontologies that try to unify the, spe the species specific ones. This is more of a condensed version of what that big uh, image shows. And it basically, I, I wanted to add it perhaps redundantly because it wanted to highlight that we have a, a, a data in this pipeline that helps us bring this diverse source data as well as uh, that we can add multiple ontologies to the monarch integration layer to build a, a combined knowledge and data graph, the integrated graph, which we disseminate through SciGraph and Goler uh, with an API that Deepak explained yesterday. It's a lightweight API. API that allows us to uh, provide access to all of our users. This is an example that you can come talk to me or you can see in my poster in a very brief uh, 
commentary on this is that we are actually capable of doing fuzzy phenotype matching, which has uh, allowed clinicians to be able to diagnose patients that may have similarly but not really overlapping uh, phenotypes using semantic tools. These are some of our tools, uh, a variant prioritization tool based on the predicted pathogenicity, as well as uh, standards to be able to distribute information about phenotypes, uh, that's called phenopackets. And then at the bottom, we have the Human Phenotype Ontology and Mondo, which are our standards, uh, our flagship uh, ontologies, and allow us to basically say, this is how we're leveraging phenotypes in order to bridge the gap or the knowledge gap that we currently have. These are all of our um, supporters and collaborators, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, you can find more about Monarch Initiative, uh, about us and the monarchinitiative.org site and the people around the room. Cheers.